make of thyselves that which he desire, be it a lord, be it a god. But should ye fail to become aught at all, ye will be forsaken, amounting only to sacrifices. In the beginning, all life was once blended together. Beasts, serpents and dragons ruled the land. Over time they evolved, and with intelligence, civilization began to establish itself across the realm. But one day, everything changed, when an outer god, called the Greater Will, sent a golden star bearing a beast into the lands between, which later would become the Elden Ring. An outer god is a source of power with origins that are not of this world. In order to watch over the world, an outer god selects an Empyrean to become a god and rule over the world. This Empyrean in turn becomes the outer god's chosen vessel. An Empyrean is no mere demigod and has the power to become a new god and forge a new order across the land. The Empyrean that is selected by an outer god must also take a lord as their consort, and is given a shadow to do their bidding. And with the lands between, the Empyrean, Marika, was selected by the Greater Will, and she in turn chose Godfrey, a fearsome warrior, to be her lord, with Malekith serving as her shadow. Marika and Godfrey had three demigod children, Godwin the Golden, and the twins, Morgoth the Omen King, and Moog, Lord of Blood. Morgoth and Moog were cursed as omens, and were hidden in the depths below the capital. The Elden Beast soon became the Elden Ring, and Marika became the Ring's vessel. With Marika now a god, she used the Elden Ring to give the Erd Tree power, which originated from the golden grace of the Greater Will, and thus ushering the Age of the Erd Tree. The Age of the Erd Tree began amongst much conflict. Marika had Godfrey lead a war against the hostile factions of the world, and one of these were the Fire Giants. The Fire Giants possessed the Flame of Ruin, a flame that could burn even the Erd Tree. So to eliminate this risk, Marika launched an attack against the Giants in order to subdue the flame. By the end of the war, only one Fire Giant remained, and was cursed with protecting the Flame of Ruin, which can never be completely put out. During the battle, the Fire Giant's god was also destroyed, by Marika herself. A god in her own right, Queen Marika desired a world free of destined death, and decided that in order to accomplish this, to tamper with the Elden Ring. The ring is made up of a number of great runes, and Marika pulled the rune of death from the Elden Ring, essentially removing the concept of death from the lands between. She would then give this to her loyal shadow, Malekith, to hold on to and keep it safe. As stated, the Age of the Erd Tree began amongst much conflict. Marika's golden army had been successful in many wars across the land, but had been unable to claim victory over the Leonian forces. This conflict set the forces of the Golden Order against the Carian royals and the Academy of Raya Lucaria. The Leurian were the descendants of early astrologers, and they sought power from the stars and from the full moon, courtesy of the Carian leader, Renala. Instead of a defeat by one side, the Leurian wars would eventually end with the union and marriage of Radagon, the champion of the Golden Order, and Renala. Renala and Radagon would go on to have three children, Rani, Radan, and Rikard. Eventually Marika would start to doubt and question the Golden Order. She wanted to search the depths of the Golden Order, their faith and their beliefs. Her goal being that she wanted to learn more about what was behind the Greater Will. 
while the age of the Erd Tree began amongst conflict, at some point there was no longer any worthy enemy left for Godfrey, and it was said that his warrior spirit left him, along with his grace. The light surrounding his body and the energy provided by the Erd Tree fled Godfrey's spirit, leaving him broken. Having been rejected by the Erd Tree, Marika had little choice but to exile Godfrey from the lands between, making him the first tarnished. With this, Godfrey also lost his Elden Lordship title, and a number of his people also became tarnished. Following his fate, they too no longer had the life force of the Erd Tree running through them. However, with Godfrey exiled, Marika chose Radagon to become the next Elden Lord, leaving Renala behind. Through this union, Radagon's children, Rani, Radan, and Rikard, were to become demigods. Together, Marika and Radagon also produced two more offspring, Miquela and Melenia. However, both were born cursed, Melenia with a rotting sickness, and Miquela with eternal childhood. But the true significance of this marriage wouldn't be realized until much later on, where it would be revealed that Radagon and Marika are one and the same. It isn't clear whether Radagon is Marika, or that he simply became her later on. But regardless, there is one thing that is certain. His, her offspring, Miquela and Melenia, were born of a single god, meaning that they too were Imperion. They were eligible to be chosen by the greater will to become Marika's successor. The loss of Radagon had Renala fall into a dark pit of despair. She was broken. This led to the outbreak of a civil war in Lunalia, where the academy rebelled against the royal family. However, her daughter, Rani, would go on to steal a shard of the Ruin of Death from Malekith, and shared it with the assassins hailing from the Eternal City. In an event called the Night of the Black Knives, the assassins killed a number of demigods, with the first one being Godwin the Golden, Marika's firstborn. The death of Marika's golden son is said to have been the beginning of what was to come. Miquela would go on to turn his back on the Golden Order. After finding out that it was unable to treat his sister, Millennia's rock curse, he created unalloyed gold that he would use to craft needles capable of warding away the meddling of outer gods, and which could delay the rotting sickness. After the Night of the Black Knives, the threat of other gods, and with her two children, Miquela and Melenia, turning their backs on the Golden Order, Marika was pushed to the brink. In clear defiance of the Greater Will, Marika lifted her hammer and shattered the Elden Ring, while Radagon simultaneously tried and failed to repair it in an attempt to remove Marika as its vessel. As punishment, the Greater Will would go on to imprison Marika along with Radagon in the Erd Tree. With the Elden Ring shattered, Marika's remaining children claimed the shards of the Elden Ring in the form of great runes. But instead of banding together, they would fight amongst themselves in a war known as the Shattering. Many fierce battles between demigods took place, with even the capital of Landell being put under siege. But the end result of the war was a stalemate between numerous factions. Many demigods now have great runes scavenged from the damaged Elden Ring, but none have properly risen to power to either replace Marika or become the new Elden Lord. Due to the shattering, the Greater Will gave the Tarnished the Grace of Gold once again and called upon them to return to the Lands Between. They were given a goal, mend the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord fixing the shattered order of the world. It has been many years since the Tarnished were called back to the Lands Between, and while there have been countless individuals who have taken up the challenge, none of them have been powerful enough to repair the Elden Ring and take their place as the new Elden Lord. That is, until one particular Tarnished soul came along. In the Chapel of Anticipation, this tarnished is revived by Grace, soon after taking their first steps into the Lands Between and eventually meeting Melina. Melina offers herself as their maiden, able to transform rune fragments into strength. 
In exchange, she asks for one thing, to be taken to the foot of the Erd Tree. Over time, Melina takes the Tarnish to the Round Table Hold, where other Tarnish champions reside. One by the name of Gideon instructs that to become a member, great runes must be acquired from the demigods from the lands between to repair the Elden Ring. From there, the Tarnished can continue towards the capital, Landell. At the base of the Erd Tree, Morgoth the Omen King is blocking the path and must be slain to progress any further. However, it is found that the Erd Tree thorns are impenetrable and successfully locking the Elden Ring inside. Melina instructs that the only way in is to travel to the mountaintops of the Fire Giants and onto the Forge. The Forge contains the flame that can burn the Erd Tree. After defeating the last Fire Giant, Melina offers herself as the source to ignite the Erd Tree. But it isn't enough, the path is still blocked. However, the burning of the tree was enough to have the tarnished hero transported to a region called Crumbling Farum Azula. After fighting through numerous foes, Malekith appears. Once Malekith is defeated, the power of the destined death is unleashed. The Erd Tree then begins to burn bright red, removing the thorns that block the path towards the Elden Ring. Returning to Landell, Gideon the All-Knowing confronts the champion. He is there to stop him becoming the new Elden Lord. Gideon is overcome by the Tarnished, clearing the way to the entrance of the Erd Tree. But before entering, Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, must be removed. Godfrey fails to defeat the Tarnished, but before the Elden Ring can be mended, there is one more obstacle in the way. Marika can be found crucified in a rune arc. Sensing the approaching Tarnished champion, she transforms into Radagon, preparing for combat. Eventually Radagon transforms into the Elden Beast, but once again, the Tarnished proves too much, defeating the Elden Beast. The Tarnished Champion is now free to repair the Elden Ring and become the next Elden Lord. Elden Ring has six possible endings, each determined by the paths that are taken throughout the game. Of the six endings, the player will take up the mantle of the Elden Lord in all but two. But like many things in Elden Ring, this ending is not quite as straightforward as it seems. There certainly isn't a right way to end Elden Ring, and the full meaning of each of them will likely be debated over the coming months or even years. This all follows the narration style that From Software has become known for in their previous titles, where the lore is complicated and often deeply hidden within the game. For this reason, I won't be going into depth on these in this video, as I don't believe I'm currently in a position where I can do them justice. In fact, every time I look into a particular piece of the story, I end up drawing slightly different conclusions. I often find myself revisiting certain aspects because they seemed a little too straightforward, that I must have surely missed something. But I think this is part of what makes the lore of this title so deep and interesting, albeit a little frustrating at times. I imagine I'll look into this video in a month's time and have a completely different outlook on how some of this played out. To be fair, there are still a lot of details regarding the story that weren't explored in this summary. But even though this might not explain everything, I hope this gives you a better idea of what's going on in the story of Elden Ring. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!